Booknerds, welcome to my channel. So today I'm filming my October wrap up. Um, hopefully it's not going up too late. So October was one of the busiest months I've had so far. Um, my module started properly. My, so I'm doing a PhD and it's a little complicated, but essentially, unlike most PhDs in the UK, mine is four years, not three. And as part of the four year thing, I have to do some modules. They run half nine to half five every day consecutively for six weeks. And that is solid um, teaching and engaging time. So I had my first two weeks of those and I am exhausted. They're really, really interesting, but it involves a lot of um, creative energy, which takes a lot out of me. So I read 15 books this month, which isn't too bad at all. Um, it's less than I thought I would read or less than I wanted to read, but it's really, really not bad. Um, and out of those 15 books, I only gave a rating to some of them, but I will go through my ratings now. So I had two two star reads, I had two 3.5 star reads, two four star reads, one 4.5 star read and three five star reads. However, before you start exclaiming how amazing it is that I've given three five stars this month, all of them are rereads. So yes, it's three five stars, but it's also three books that I knew would be five stars before I read them. So. I mean, I'm still glad I read them, don't get me wrong, but it's not quite like I found three new five star reads. But yeah, so I'll just go through the ones that I didn't go through. I did a mid-month wrap up, which I will link down below. Um, please check it out if you haven't watched it yet. And I will just go through what I read in October. So unfortunately we're off to a bit of a negative start and I read The Other Misses by Mary Q. Beaker. This is an arc, it's not out till 2020. I'm not sure when in 2020 it's out, but um, I only had three months to read it, so I really wanted to get it at, um, to get to it before I lost access. I really, really wanted to like this book, and fortunately, um, it wasn't great. I did give it two stars out of five. The main problem with this book is it uses a thriller trope I hate, and I'm not going to spoil anything, so don't worry. Um, I will link my full review down below, and that's also spoiler free, but it explains in a bit more detail why I didn't like it. But this essentially uses a trope I hate and it uses it really badly. So I think it becomes quite obvious early on what is going on um, in terms of the mystery aspect. And it just takes forever for the book to actually reveal it, um, which is a problem. The characters are really unlikable. I didn't really engage with any of them and also the writing's a little weird I don't want to judge it too harshly because it is an arc but it describes something as eye-pleasing as one word which was really weird um there would be the first few pages in particular I found really rough there was like a sentence would use the same adjective twice in the same sentence and it would be really repetitive I just didn't enjoy it very much. Um, it's a shame because I really wanted to like this and I really liked Mary Kubica's other stuff, but this just wasn't for me. Thankfully, the next book I read was actually a really lovely surprise, and that was A Banquet for Hungry Ghosts by Ying Chen Kompenstein. So this is on Kindle Unlimited, but I actually couldn't read it on my Kindle. I could only read it on my iPad. And because of that reason, I almost didn't read it because I hate reading on screens with um, light behind them. I get migraines and it gives me headaches quite a lot. But I was really curious about this book and I've already dropped quite a few of my Snakes and Ladders TBR ones and this is one of them and I was like, I'll give it a try and I'm so glad I did. This is a really, really cool short story collection. It's um, based off folk tales from, I think it's Japanese, Chinese culture? Asian culture, I say. I'll clarify down below. Um, I really can't remember at the moment. But it has essentially a really cool structure where it's based around this meal and the idea that you feed ghosts because otherwise they'll come back and haunt you because they're hungry. So it tells a short story and then it has the some of the history behind that short story and why it's, it's told. Um, and then it has a recipe for the food mentioned in the short story, which is really, really cool. I loved this book. It's got an interesting writing tone. I wouldn't say it's for children necessarily. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it as an adult. I don't think it's juvenile. It's just there's something about the writing tone that's not 
like most short stories I guess it's kind of told a bit like folk tales but yeah I really really loved it I definitely recommend checking it out if you've got a way to read it um and I'm definitely glad I did the next book I read was a weird one and that was Scream All Night by Derek Millman this I gave 3.5 stars to you this was on my most anticipated um 2018 releases and I thought this was kind of a horror book. So it's about a um, a guy who, he's emancipated himself and he used to live in this, essentially a studio, a movie studio that makes B-horror movies. And this studio is its own little culture. So the people who work there essentially don't really um, communicate with the outside world. His father was very distant. You find out quite early on his father was emotionally and psychologically abusive and physically abusive in some cases, but not not in a sexual way, just um, physical abuse. And this is about when his father is... So I'll tell you how it starts because it's really weird. Um, his father is dying of an illness and wants to be buried alive. So he's having his funeral while he's still alive and our main character is invited to go to this funeral, which he does. And then he kind of gets sucked back into the world of this film studio. I won't go into any more detail about the plot, but I was expecting this to be like a horror movie thing. It kind of sounds like there's going to be horror things that happen at the studios. And it's really not. It's kind of this beautiful, really tragic story of what it's like to have a family that you don't really want to be a part of but you feel this obligation to um yeah I really enjoyed it it's got an unusual tone but I think it did what it wanted to do really well one thing I didn't like it immediately starts with a uh, like haha you're actually gay bro joke um which was really off-putting it's like the first line and I don't understand why it's there because like it, it it didn't need to be there it could have been edited out and nothing would be lost but apart from that um yeah I really recommend this book I, I still don't really know how I feel about it because it was so unexpected from what I thought it would be but yeah like I said just trigger warnings for um abuse and difficult parental relationships and family relationships and all that kind of thing one other important thing this book was extremely stressful to read um by which i mean the main character you feel like the main character is being pushed into doing stuff that he doesn't want to do and is very frustrating as a reader because there's no way out of it for him but you still have to read about it and yeah it's not a feel good read by any means and it's a very emotionally involving read i will say that much so yeah just be aware of that as well the next book I read was another reread, and that was The Long Walk by Stephen King. Yes, I reread this again. I think it's like the third time since starting my channel that I've read this. I don't really know why I read it, I just really wanted to. It was a short read. Um, I love this book, I'm not going to talk about it much more. I give it five stars because I always give it five stars. Yeah, I, I just, I felt like reading it and I really wanted to, so I did. And the final book I'm going to talk about in this video was The May Queen Murders by Sarah Jude. This I got given for my birthday very kindly. Um, Nicole from Beautiful Chaos of Books, I will link her channel down below. She bought me this and I was really, really excited to read it. And thankfully it lived up to my expectations. It was a really good read. I gave it 3.5 stars. Um, maybe it should have been 4. I'd, I'm still debating. Because again, it was slightly different in tone than I thought it would be. But this is a really cool book. This is about um, a girl named Ivy and she has a best friend called Heather and they live in this really small rural community and they kind of interact with some of the city kids but they're seen as outsiders. Um, and you find out that Heather is keeping a secret and her and Ivy are kind of growing apart you get the impression that Heather is getting sick of Ivy and Ivy's panicking about that and you also learn early on that Heather is seeing someone romantically and then Heather goes missing 
and Ivy realises that there's lots of stuff she doesn't know about. It's all linked to some murders that have happened in the past in the town. This book had some really great atmospheric moments. It's written really well. It's got um, a great setting. I really did like the characters. They were pretty fleshed out. The only thing that I didn't like is there is um, quite an obvious, I guess, twist to me. And I think it's a case of when the book was written. I think it was written a while ago, like in the 2000s, maybe. I'll double check, actually. Oh no, it was written in 2016, so I, uh, never mind, ignore that. There is um, no excuse for why this is like a twist, but there is a twist in this that I, I could see coming a mile off, and it kind of... It doesn't ruin the mystery because you still don't know what's happened, but you become... It's kind of painful that the main character doesn't know what's going on. So yeah, that was a little annoying, but like I said, this is a really good book. I'm really happy I read it. Um, it was a great October read. Uh, I don't know if the author's actually written anything else like this, but if she has, I'd be definitely be interested in checking it out. So yeah, so that is all the books I'm going to talk about. I have read a couple more books, but I'm doing a separate point horror vlog for those. I don't know what order this is going up in. Maybe the vlog's already gone up, maybe it hasn't yet. If it has, I will link it down below. Um, but yeah. Those are the books that I read. Let me know what you read in October. Let me know what you thought of these. If you've read any of these or if you've read any really good horror books in October, do let me know because I love horror. I love thrillers. I love all that kind of stuff. I really wish I'd been able to cram more spooky books into October, but I did my best. I still read 15 and I really enjoyed a lot of what I did read. So I did have a very good reading month. Yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me massively. And I hope to see you next time.